Welcome back. I'm GTGD and this is video 15. And now I'm going to load data from files or save files. I'm going to load data from it and then restore the world. So this is, I guess, uh, the most uh, important video up to this point. This is where, where you're going to really see the project, I'd say, come together. And it's really uh, going to be interesting. Uh, in the sense that now you've got something that you can apply to so many different types of games. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the Game Manager Save Load Script. And uh, now it's time to pretty much make the uh, code for loading the game. And I just realized one of the variables here I don't need. This one, private string array file pots, I don't need that. So I'm just going to delete that one. I do need this one here. And now I'm going to start uh, writing the code. So I've got that method here and soon I'll be uncommenting it uh, and making use of it. So I'm going to write here public void load game. So that's the method. Okay. And it of course matches what I have up there in the start method that's commented out. The first thing to do is check if folder exists and create it if not. So I already have that method up above for when I was saving. Uh, so I'm just going to reuse that uh, and just keep going. So then the next thing is I haven't written this one. So I'm going to say get file paths. It's a method that I need to create. And the other method that I need to create is read data from file. Okay, let's go ahead and make the get file paths method. So let's copy that, say void, paste that in, and start filling this in. Okay, so for get file paths, it's I'm gonna fill in the variable file path to load is equal to player prefs dot get string. And what's that string? It's the file path. This is the key that I'm passing in. So it, it must match exactly with what we have in the main menu. So if you remember in the main menu script. We set this string here, set file name to retrieve. So now we're actually going to retrieve that. So the key has to match. So you could always just copy that, come back here and paste it in to make sure it matches exactly because it must be uh, matching exactly to work. Okay, I'll uncomment that out now. So that uh, method was really short and uh, simple. Next thing is to read data from file. So I'm gonna say, and this is a big one. So v void read data from file. Okay. And the very first thing I'm going to do uh, before reading actually is to clear our list of tiles in the tile map. So gmanager.tileplacement.list of tiles in tile map dot clear. Okay, so I'm just going to empty that out because it could be very well be a session a game was already running or whatever. And I'm just going to clear it out. And you could have load game functionality from within your game scene. In my case, I don't. I have it. You actually go to the main menu and then you uh, load a game. So in that sense, like it shouldn't have anything in it. But uh, if you have that load game functionality from within the game scene, then yet you do need to clear this list. Now the next thing I need to just check is if we're starting a new game. So if main menu dot is starting new game. So this is how you can uh, access a global variable that you know static variable that I had. Uh, in this case, it's a boolean. It's a static bool. Uh, it's a global variable more or less, and that's how you do it. It's it's whichever script you wrote it in. So I have it here that it's. Um, a public static bool is starting new game. So I'm simply just calling main menu dot is starting new game. Uh, that's that's how it works. So if I am starting a new game, then in that case, I don't need to load anything from file. But what I will do is I'll retrieve the player name. So player dot name is going to equal player prefs uh, dot get string. And what is that? It's the key is player name. And we should just make sure that the key matches what we have in the main menu script. So if we come here, uh, yeah, it does. I mean, I can tell that I typed it exactly the same, but that's it. So player prefs dot set string, that's the key. So make sure the keys match. Okay. So awesome. Okay. So that bit is done. Now, if that's the case, also return. Don't continue executing any further code in this method. If it's starting a new game, that's all we need to do. And it's a fresh new game. But if we are not starting a new game, then we're going to use the stream reader. So uh, not that using uh, and then stream reader. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to call the variable just stream reader and is equal to 
file dot open text file path to I uh, haven't spelled that correct at all. File path. I still haven't spelled it correct. File path to load. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, and just put in our curly braces here, and we're gonna write a whole lot of code inside of this with while our file is open. So with our file open, what we're gonna do? We're gonna create a list of the type string, and we're gonna pass in in each uh, entry inside of the string, uh, each line from the file. Because the file, uh, the save file, is just full of uh, string lines, lines of strings. It's just full of text. So that's uh, pretty helpful there. So I'm just gonna say uh, list. So I'm gonna make up a list here. String. It's of the type string. I'm gonna just call it json string list i mean it's got nothing to do with json at this time i just i choose to just call it that telling myself what i'm going to about what i'm about to use it for okay so that's what i've named my list next thing is i'm going to have a look inside of the file so i'm going to say while stream reader dot peak so it's an inbuilt method dot peak is greater than or equal to zero so we're going to say uh, go and read through all of the lines in the file, right? And what I'm gonna do is as it reads the line, I'm gonna add it into this uh, list here. So what we're gonna say here is JSON string list dot add stream reader dot read line. Okay, and that's it. That's totally awesome. So we've actually now transferred the contents of our save file line by line into this list of strings. So very, very good. Okay, the next thing is to actually restore like our basic data. So basic data, so that's a variable we declared up at the top of the script. So basic data is equal to JSON utility dot from JSON. So now we're from JSON. Now what's the type? Basic data. And we're gonna pass in the JSON string list and it's just index zero. The very first line has all of our basic data in it, if you remember. So that's very nice too. So now I'm gonna restore it. So player.name is equal to basic data dot player name. Okay, so then player.position is equal to basic data dot player position. All right. And next thing is g manager time dot minutes is equal to basic data dot minutes. Okay, we have actually just restored our very first bits of data to the world. So our name, the player, will now have the name uh, that is in the save file. They will actually have their position updated to what is mentioned in the save file and the time of day will be adjusted accordingly to what is in the save file. So that's awesome. Uh, next thing is now we're going to iterate uh, through uh, a bunch more rows in the list but depending on how many NPCs we have. So the next thing what I'm trying to say is next thing is to restore NPCs. So for int i is equal to zero i less than basic data dot npc count i plus plus okay so now we're gonna basically uh go through uh uh what am i trying to say i'm trying to say is that we're gonna go through uh the np we're gonna create uh if a variable a placeholder variable for each of our npcs and basically restore the data and then apply it to the npc uh, so I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is to say uh, NPC data. So I'm actually going to, oh, not there. I'm going to say, so just going up in here, I want to say NPC data, and I'm just going to call this variable something like restored NPC data uh, is equal to JSON utility dot from JSON. And uh, it will be of the type NPC data. So that's telling uh, the JSON utility what it should convert the string back into. So it's going to convert it back into an NPC data uh, format. And I'm going to pass in my JSON string list. And it's going to be, interestingly, it's going to be, uh, so square brackets, I plus one. Okay, so it's going to be I plus one. 
And there's a very good reason for the plus one if you have a think about it. So let me just first off close that uh, before I get all confused. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that it's i plus one because basic data takes the very first line in our JSON string list, right? So the very first line, I index zero, is for basic data. So we're just adding one there because this int i is equal to zero. Uh, so therefore, uh, by putting i plus one, there'll be one. So it'll actually start in the correct place uh, in 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 the in the list for capturing NPC data, NPC data. And that's how I'm having everything in one file, uh, one save file. So, okay. So let's get, uh, let's keep going there. So next thing is, uh, I'm going to start applying that. So transform, and I'm just going to call this like NPC transform is equal to NPC container dot get child. And which one is it? It's, it's as per I. So, uh, as per I. So in the NPC container, it's now going to get like, if I'm starting at zero, it's going to capture the very first NPC that's in our game scene. Okay, so with that done, so now I can say NPC transform dot name is equal to restored NPC data dot NPC name. Okay, so NPC transform dot get component uh, AI behavior. So I'm going to re restore something there too. Oh, excuse me, I did a mistake there. So AI behavior. And uh, in it, what am I going to restore there? It's going to be the current action. So AI behavior dot my current action is equal to restored NPC data dot NPC action. Very good. Okay, so the next thing is uh, basically NPC transform dot position. So I'm, I'm just going to say here, actually, I'll just type it out. NPC transform dot position is equal to restore data dot NPC position. And actually, I will copy these and just duplicate it twice. So I need to, you know, the way the behavior index. So I need to capture that. I mean, restore that. So behavior index and restore NPC data dot behavior. NPC behavior index and also waypoint. So my current, uh, not not my current, it's a waypoint. So next waypoint index uh, and pass in the uh, waypoint as well. NPC waypoint index. Okay, so that will have restored all of those parameters to that particular NPC. So that's pretty good. Uh, so uh, next thing is, so now let's start working on the tile map uh, in data basically. So for int j. So for int j is equal to basic data dot NPC count plus one. So you notice where I'm starting this from. It's not starting from zero because we're going to start from the correct line in the JSON string list there. So we're going to start from the correct entry. And th that's the very first entry which has tile map data in it. So then, uh, so I guess for that, so j, uh, less than, so I'm going to be iterating while j is less than, uh, json string list dot count. So yeah, because we're going to read all the way to the end of the json string list now, because it's all just tile map data. I know that. So I might as well just do that. Uh, okay. And next thing is j plus plus. Okay. So now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say game manager which is tile placement, I'm going to make up a variable here. So game manager tile placement dot tiles in tile map. And I'm going to call this tile to recall. So what you see me here doing is I'm making up a new variable that's off the type tiles in tile map. That's just a way you can actually uh, call it up. If it's in another script, the class is in another script, you can call it that way. Um, okay, so I'll just say is equal to JSON you utility dot from JSON and it's off the type same type. So it's a game manager uh, tile placement dot tiles in tile map. Uh, and then I guess so that's that's my uh, from JSON. That's my type. But what is it that I'm actually trying to get? I'm going to try to get that line in the JSON string list. So JSON string list pass in J and then just close that off. And that is uh, basically the line of data 
from the JSON string list that equates to tile information. So that's it. So I've now got uh, that done there. So just to remind us as well, what is tiles in tile map? What is that class? Inside of it, it has the tile index and it has the tile location. The tile index corresponds to the tile database scriptable object. So uh, basically, you can go through this array and uh, from that you can then retrieve the actual tile so that's how it works it's gonna it's basically going into the tile placement script using this class and then from there i'm then going to go to the tile database okay so now that i've got that recalled i can now add that to the list of tiles in the tile map so i can say g manager tile placement dot list of tiles in tile map dot add and what are we adding this tile to recall okay so that is now done so I'm now building up that list uh, my objective is to build up the list and then run through the list go through the list and actually then uh, basically apply those tiles set the tiles in the world uh, so I can now close I, I can now stop looking inside of the file so that's closing off my for loop. I'm just going to make another curly brace here. And that is closing uh, the using uh, statement there. Oh, actually, I didn't need to do that already. I just had to uh, just go outside of it. But anyway, so now I'm going outside of the using. So the next bit of code is outside of there. So it's for int i is equal to 0. i is less than g manager tile placement dot list of tiles in tile map dot count i plus plus okay very good uh, so what am i going to do now i'm actually going to set the tile so g manager tile placement dot construction tile map dot set tile and what does it need to set the tile it needs two pieces of information uh, it's going to need the position of where the tile is going to be and then it needs an actual tile of the type tile base which we have inside of our tile database scriptable object so this code looks a little, they're going to look a little bit uh, convoluted but it's actually very simple it's just that there are just so many references that it's working through so uh, dot set tile g manager tile placement dot list of tiles and tile map uh, it's i dot tile location so now i'm supplying the location i'm just going to hit a comma and go to the next line because there's a long bit of code to come so g manager so the next one dot tile, uh, g manager tile placement dot tile database okay so now i'm access accessing the tile database dot array of tiles database but which uh entry inside of that array now let's pass in uh, again g manager tile placement dot list of tiles and tile map i dot uh, tile index and then i guess uh, oh and that should be tile index yeah okay good so that's that and i'll just say dot tile okay so that was how i would access the actual tile uh, that needs to basically get uh, instantiated there now let me just check here it's uh, not too happy with that so let me just check what i have not done correctly and i think it's simply i haven't put in a round bracket to close that off there we go that's looking happier now uh, so we're almost done that is actually um we've actually now set the tile you're now actually going to be working through uh, your list of tiles and tile map and restoring them to the world. This is it. This is actually the, the code that's doing it. You're actually using the inbuilt Unity method of set tile uh, and it's working. Uh, so the final thing is I'm going to rebuild the nav mesh. So start coroutine and what is that? It's gmanager tile placement dot rebuild nav mesh and that's pretty much it. Okay, so now let's go and uh, uh, uncomment this so now we are going to read data from file inside of the load game method and in start I will run load game and that is the script done okay so we can go back to unity and I'm pretty sure there are no errors here whatsoever
And what I did do is in my save data folder, I just went ahead and deleted the save file. So I made a I made a player to save file, but it's not correct because inside of it, I mean, I could have just changed the player name inside of that save file. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some brand new save files uh, with a little bit of different content between them and just show that getting restored. So I just need to run the game. And then of course, if I hit load button, there's nothing there. So I'm going to make a new uh, new game. I'm going to call this one player test start the game all right so there we go we're inside the game let's increase the size of this so i can see a bit better and just make some tiles here just like that okay that's enough to test so i'm going to hit save game. and i'll move a little bit too i'll move a little bit like that save the game exit go to load game hit player test and there you go the world has been uh, just nicely restored for us i'll just move here again i'll save the game exit go ahead load game hit player test there we go the players in the correct position okay now i'm gonna make another new game this one i'm just gonna call uh test very imaginative all right start a new game okay this time i'm gonna do some extensions to this house i'm gonna put in a bit of flooring there as well okay I think that's that's a great uh, extension so i'm going to save that and exit okay so if i go to load game i can see test there if i hit test i can see it loaded the world back up the time and everything looks just fine i can load a uh, player test as well and that was my other save game how about i make another one just to uh, get more uh, done here um, fantastic uh, game and that's what i'm going to call my player makes no sense but anyway this time i'm going to make uh, some outdoor area put some wood flooring put some flowers and whatnot all around uh, looks really nice okay i don't know why you're doing this at 5 a.m by the way but yeah i suppose you can if you want to and save the game and exit and then go ahead and load that and there's fantastic game if i hit it and there you go it's restored the world uh, exactly as we saved it i'm going to exit there try loading the others too yep player test is working just fine uh, go ahead load another game like test and that is working just fine as well so very very good very happy uh, that is working just fantastic so you now have your tile map system working. You've got saving, you've got loading, you can have multiple save files and this sort of thing that you now have, you can apply this to many different types of games and projects. It's not just this game uh, that this methodology works for. You can now try and reuse that code for all sorts of different projects. You now have a base to work from. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, the next few videos are gonna be more relaxing and uh, I, I want to finish uh, the I, I guess it's another three four videos uh, and we're going to end on a relaxing note more or less so the next few videos will be a lot more easy I think I'm going to cover like post processing I'll cover sorting orders so like having a tree and having the player appear behind the big tree for example and animated tiles so that's going to come up uh, in future videos so yeah I guess I will see you then